Engineer Gold Mines is focused on the exploration and development of the historic high-grade Engineer Gold Mine situated 32 kilometers southwest of Atlan, British Columbia. Engineer Gold Mines is fully permitted for surface and underground exploration with the 2019 drill program now underway. Engineer Gold Mines Limited trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol EAU. For more information, please visit us at engineergoldmines.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is market historian Bob Hoy. He's the chief investment strategist for chartsandmarkets.com. Welcome back to the show, Bob. Yeah, good morning, Jim, on this Friday morning in Vancouver with uh, snow going by sideways and some of it accumulating. Yes, uh, no city panics more when there's uh, a fallout of dihydrous monoxide. <laughs> in, in crystallized in form. form. In yes. crystal form. Yes, crystallized dihydrous monoxide. Yeah, yeah, it's not... every time right at the freezing point. It's always slippery, zero adhesion, and then you got hail. So Vancouver's a nightmare. But hey, am I going to go anywhere? No. no. <laughs> we both work from home. <laughs> We're smart. <laughs> Bob, we have a question as usual, and uh, we'll kick off the show with that. Bob, I assume that all this repo money that the Fed is handing out to the hedge funds and big bank trading desks to buy stocks has to eventually be paid back, yet the Fed seems to be printing more and more, encouraging hedge funds to take on more and more debt, so as to seemingly elevate the markets while fixing some year-end plumbing problems. Has the Fed created some kind of perpetual motion machine for financial assets, or will the laws of gravity and negative leverage eventually win out in 2020. Oh, yeah. Got an old saying for that one is the forces of gravity and the forces of bear markets suck and eventually it'll get us. But the repo, repo, R-E-P-O is the slang for a repurchase agreement. And, uh, the, this is what the Fed's been doing and it, it, it temporarily injects cash into the money market. So the next step is to wonder why is the Fed injecting cash into the money market when the stock market is at highs? And, of course, what it is is that earlier in the year, the uh, you had sudden financial shocks in Argentina and Turkey where the central bank was running out of reserves and the money market was in chaos and they had been providing liquidity and then they ran out of liquidity and so short rates zoomed up and the currency went down. And then when you're in a big bull market uh, or bubble, uh, this can be a sign of serious problems. And then you had uh, sort of May and June similar discoveries in India and China. So that's where we said that this then, the path will be that the sudden loss of liquidity would hit New York in the fall. And so uh, September 10th or something it was where the U.S. money market, that's, you know, shorter than one year, uh, just whoosh, liquidity disappeared on the pattern that started with Argentina and Turkey. And, of course, the Fed did the recipe thing, oh, injected the liquidity in. And so the amount of these repos, and they've been also buying treasury bills and screwing around, is directly proportionate to the loss of natural liquidity in the New York money market. So also in September was reported that as part of this sudden loss of liquidity, that the huge banking firm, J.P. Morgan, and they have been successful for the last decade, I mean really successful, so they've been doing the right things generally, but it was reported that they'd bought the long end of the bond market, and this is where they had employed the cash that was in the money market. So 
one of the reasons why there was a sudden vacuum was because J.P. Morgan bought the long end of the bond market at the high in the bond market was August 28th. And this is starting to re- be reported about September 12th, 13th in there. So it's obvious that they went for the story that U.S. long rates were going to decline to zero or less, like German rates. And uh, so so it was a natural loss of liquidity. Um, The Fed stepped in to fill the hole and is still doing that, but it didn't create the positive out there. It um you've had like um, industrial commodities base metals uh might have rallied last year to mid year and then went into their seasonal decline into November but they didn't they got hit in the summer and the same with uh, crude oil the cr- the rally till September might have been stronger than it was and it took a sharp hit down to 51 in October and then rallied up so there seems to us to have been a natural bid for base metals and for crude oil through a period when they might have been weak. So I think the support for the stock market and industrial commodities was there and not related to the flushing up of the system. So the thing to look at is the credit spreads which uh, the difference between high-grade and low-grade bonds, they reversed to widening. And then in the fall had a correction on the side that was friendly for the market. And then, of course, with the yield curve, and we've got the curve back to, I think, 1857, and the observation from that is that in the U.S., once the yield curve inverts where short rates get higher than long rates, a recession has followed. So this is, in my view, is in the books. But there's an irony here because when the curve inverts and then reverses to then what we call steepening, that steepening process is very good for the spreads that bankers deal with. So the initial change to steepening uh, was expected to be friendly for banks, and it has been. But as steepening continues, and it looks like the curve is about to extend the trend, that is a symptom of contraction, a post-bubble contraction. And then with the credit spreads, no, just I'm going to back up a bit on the on the yield curve. When it inverts, where short rates get higher than long, this is uh, the speculators playing the old game of borrowing short and lending long because you can borrow lower rates than you can get on the other side. So you get you get the you ca- you capture the spread, and that's is as old as the hill. So the um, then J P Morgan really did get sucked into the trap of boring short and lending long and the long bond has been declining declining in price uh, it's it's a fairly well established downtrend now so they're on the wrong side of the trade and yet their stock keeps going up and uh, it now actually as of this week as uh, the pattern is given some sequential cells so there are technical excess is being reached and a pattern that suggests that it's ending and with these uh, sequential sell signals you get the action can can continue positive for a few weeks so uh, it's interesting I don't often cover one single stock like that but the situation for JP Morgan is really quite fascinating and we'll watch and see how it all plays out so the question dealt with the re- repos. The Fed is doing repos because there was a vacuum in the in the money market when it was expected, 
and uh, it's a temporary thing, probably. But I think that the overall credit markets are way bigger than any one central bank or even the top central banks can cope with. So the credit markets are suggesting a contraction, and uh, we're watching to see how that path works out. We'll have more with Bob Hoy right after the break. Cypress Development Corp. is developing a world-class lithium resource in the heart of Clayton Valley, Nevada. The size of the resource makes the Clayton Valley project a premier asset with the potential to impact the future of lithium supply. Cypress Development Corp. trades on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol CYP, the OTCQB, symbol CYDVF, and on Frankfurt, symbol C1Z1. For more information, please visit our website, cypressdevelopmentcorp.com. Media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, Recycling Trade Publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. Welcome back. We're speaking with Bob Hoy. Bob, an interesting headline you found from uh, Mr. Bernanke, the former chair of the uh, U.S. Fed. He said the Fed has several tools to prevent recession. Well, how well have those tools worked out? And if they have several tools, how come they haven't worked? (laughs) Man, that's theory versus reality. And uh, it's it is so simple to refute the notion of interventionist uh, central banking uh, because the original promoters of the Federal Reserve back in the early 1900s, they had seen that when you have a financial setback, uh, a recession would follow. So then the theory on the Fed is that it would be there as a lender of last resort and would fix things and make sure that there were no financial setbacks. Therefore, there would be no recession. And then my own experience in this is goes back to the mid-1960s when then macroeconomists got their hands on mainframe com- uh, computers and then they came up with a whole bunch of models about how much uh, M2 to inject and things like that. And, and so in 1965, they were absolutely convinced that they, uh, the recessions were prevented. But then a practical mind would just say, okay, how many recessions has there been since the Fed opened the doors in January 1914? Well, there's been 18 recessions. The theory does not work. And then with, uh, and with Bernanke, who was a scholar, he was an academic, and his specialty was understanding the 1929 boom and crash and then the recession. But he understands it in theoretical terms, not practical terms. And uh, there was even one back in 2002 when there was some dinner honoring uh, the, uh, he was actually quite a good economist, Milton Friedman. And then Bernanke made some outrageous statements that, uh, this time the central bankers would get it right because they understood how the 1930 problems uh, occurred. So this then and Fed, then Bernanke was chair when you had the Great Recession. So uh, these guys are BS artists and they can never apply a critical examination of their own theories and they always consider they're going to work so this is where the statement by um, Bernanke says that the Fed has many tools to prevent a recession but that's the same tools they've had since 1914 only now they've can dress things up with computers and I would guess that if this market now goes into uh, a financial turmoil greater than what we have, then you're going to have a recession. And the rest of the world 
it's getting uh, the economy is getting pretty soggy. So this then is what we call a collector's headline when somebody famous comes out and says something that you know ain't going to work. So we'll watch how that one comes out. We'll have more with Bob Hoy right after this. Avon Resources Limited is a gold exploration company with significant projects in British Columbia and the Yukon, trading on the TSX Venture Exchange, symbol ABN, and the OTCQB, symbol ABNAF. Surrounded by world-class gold deposits and mines, Avon's 23,000 hectares Forest Kerr Gold Project is located in the heart of the Golden Triangle in northwestern BC. For more information, visit us at avonresources.com. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought-provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're chatting with Bob Hoy. Bob, what kind of risks loom for the Indian banking system right now? we got to watch all of those things, you know, and... uh because it is an international global market, and the headline on this one was that risks loom for Indian state banks, and here was the reason why I grabbed the headline. They had been binging on buying sovereign bonds, which means countries other than the U.S., and they're probably buying the U.S. treasuries as well. So uh, here you you got a headline now that the... Uh, Indian state banks are uh, at risk because they were buying sovereign bonds. And then there is the indication that in the United States, J.P. Morgan was buying treasuries uh, right at the top of the market. So uh, these two are worth watching, and we will keep track of it and, and keep our listeners posted on how these headlines are kind of an anecdotal way to help you make uh, decisions on your own risk. And if the big guys are taking on lots of risk uh, and providing the big bid, that's the time for uh, even those of us who are just small investors uh, to take advantage and and build some liquidity. Another uh, headline that you noticed today, China opens doors to genetically modified agricultural goods from the U.S., yeah, that's not a major money market thing, but it shows that there is some rational decision making there because these genetically modified grains are absolutely incredible for reducing the need for pesticides and fertilizers and stuff like that and is all part of the progress of uh, improving agricultural uh, if yields and efficiencies. So I just thought, that, hey, that's a good one. A, a, a government in China has said that genetically modified, in this case, grains are okay, and, and it, it is the practical decision to make. So I will watch that one as well. Also another headline concerning China, China steps up Communist Party control of state-owned firms. Well, Bob, aren't most firms there, even if not officially owned by the state, still are state-controlled? I guess maybe they were, although they've got shareholder positions in it, maybe they were allowing management to have their way when everything was going up. But there are parts of the China's economy that are not going up anymore. So I guess they're getting a little concerned, and then they that what they're doing is putting more political control in, which is the worst thing you can do because you want to have management that is making decisions based on business opportunities and actually trying to reduce risk. And here you're going; these are they'll be appointing, let's call them political operators, into the game, and that is not going to be good either. So. Gosh, some of these headlines are fascinating this week. Well, if uh, having politicians and uh, a rap chicks uh, run your affairs, the Soviet Union would still be booming, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, it's, it is uh, amazing that that uh, so many people will accept what a government says as being more valid than just what a private person would say. And they're, oh gosh, this goes way back where eh, when Rome was destroying itself in the third century, as the state was expanding hugely, the uh, well, they had Rome when it city with its population was almost a million people they had 400,000 people on the dole getting free wheat and free bread and free this and free that so uh, it was essentially a, a welfare dictatorship that ended uh, that ended Rome but while they were expanding the influence of the state a line used often was the genius of the emperor and then in the 1500s, when again uh, experiment and authoritarian government was going, then it was the infallibility of the Pope. And so where uh, the church leadership was intruding on private life and confiscating property and messing around, it was done according to the genius of the Pope. And then also the head of the church then came up with a very crafty idea, which was the divine right of kings, so that an absolutist king, uh, his decisions, of course, were outstanding, and he had every right to make them because it was a divine right. But, of course, with that concept, the priest then had would, would advise the king. So... It was another control game, and then, of course, over the last century, it has the buzz has been the genius of the Federal Reserve, such that you want to be clinical about this. It's about, it was originally a bunch of bankers, now it's a bunch of economists, but because it's a collective, quasi-government agency, it's considered to be supernatural, beyond say a group of a dozen. Ordinary banks. So it, it has this cachet of being supernatural, and the history shows that if, if they really did have supernatural powers, and if their theories were really working, there'd be no recessions. And the way the markets have gone over the last year is in a pattern that has led to a recession. So maybe number 19 is discovered later in the year in a system where that People still believe that the Federal Reserve can prevent recessions, and as Bernanke said it just the other day, and he's also supposed to be the scholarly expert on the 1929 uh, crash and contraction. He is, but mainly on the theoretical side, he hasn't done enough work on what actually happened in the markets then. So I'm always willing to learn, Jim. How about you? Well, the day you stop learning is the day you stop living. Oh, that's a good one. Bob, thank you so much for chatting with us. Well, here we are, uh, Snowy Friday, Friday, and uh, we'll talk to you next week. Yeah, we'll see if we can survive the crystallized dihydrous monoxide. Oh, that's right. Now, here's my advice from my sister about when you've got a snow warning. The advice is to stay indoors and drink lots of liquid, lots of fluids. Yes, uh, the kind where the store only sells it to <laughs> people over 19. Yes. <laughs> Thanks again, Bob. Okay, next week. Yep, bye-bye. My guest has been market historian Bob Hoy, the chief investment strategist for chartsandmarkets.com. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio. Find us on Twitter at HowStreet. Our YouTube channel is Talk Digital Network. If you have any questions for Bob, like many people do, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.